Hey guys, Sparks here. Welcome back to my Adobe Start With Stock video series. So in my last video we focused primarily on the story building aspect of the cut and now we're going to move into color, which is my favorite part. And if you haven't seen the last video, you should definitely watch it before this one. Because I referenced the Adobe stock video clip as inspiration, I was able to match a lot of the lighting in camera and on set, which is going to save me a lot of time in my color processing stage. My first step is actually going to be going through the cut and matching white balance. Some of the clips, like the ones I shot, are a bit warmer than the Adobe stock footage. As you see here, it's a little bit on the cooler side. You can really tell when you look at the shadows and the highlights, they're a little bit more blue. And on mine, they're a little bit more tungsten. So we're just going to go through here and match up all the footage so that way any sort of coloring or LUTs or anything we throw on it is going to look even and seamless. The great thing about Adobe's footage is that you can treat it like you would anything you shot yourself. Right now I'm just messing with the temperature and I usually like to go to the extremes so I can really see the difference once I apply. And you can see like right in here and in here I'm just seeing a little bit of green. And in his I'm getting it, oh it seems a little pink in the mid-tones. So I'm actually going to push it just a hair on the green side. So when I toggle off and on you can see the difference and although it's subtle it still makes a difference. Now I'm just analyzing the highlights here like on the cheek and the forehead. And they look a really similar tone as his do. So I feel like that's a pretty good medium ground to bring everything to. And I also know from looking at this footage, you can see how both backgrounds are a little bit more on the gray side rather than pure black. Because I have that knowledge, I'm actually going to go ahead and pull the shadows down. I'm going to speed through the next portion just because I'll be essentially doing the same thing to all the clips, just making sure the white balance is matched up. Alrighty, so next I'm going to play around with the edges here and see if I can darken them enough to make it feel like the seamless is infinite. The first thing I'm going to try is a vignette. These are usually hit or miss for me because I feel like I don't have quite as much control as I wish I did, but that helps a little bit so I'll leave it on there. And next I'm going to do a crop. And you can usually add a pretty large feather. I'm gonna rotate her just a little bit. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. In this stage, I'm essentially trying to get her to look as floaty as possible. That feels like a believable space to me. So I'm actually gonna just copy that effect over to my other floating scene. So I actually just rendered the clip in reverse and I like it a lot better. It feels more natural, a little bit more floaty and less stiff. So the next thing I'm going to focus on is the clip where they're interacting for the first time. You can see the squares here, and we want to eliminate all of that. I'm very happy with all the advancements in the Lumetri color. Um, for a long time, I feel Photoshop reigned supreme <laughs> in the possibilities you had with an image, but I feel like Lumetri color really stepped up the game. One of my favorite tools in Lumetri color is the curves tool. I use it for almost everything but especially crushing the shadows. So just like that, it goes away almost entirely. Immediately it feels a little less divided. So now we're working in general color editing. So this is going to affect everything below it. And I know in general I want to desaturate it because I'm still seeing a little bit too much saturation in his clothes as well as mine. They still appear a little bit green. So 
after throwing on one of my favorite LUTs, I, I see it's really intense, so I'm going to bring that down. And as I do that, it's reminiscent of a Rembrandt painting, so I actually really like it. Although it's a little punchy, I think it feels pretty juicy at the same time. As a final step, I want to go into my effects panel, go to Lee Dimitri one last time. And I'm going to add in some green to the shadows. The reason I'm doing that is because in painting, an underpainting is actually the first layer of paint applied to a canvas or a board and it functions as a base for the other layers of paint. Um, so it essentially acts as a foundation for your painting and is a great way to start it because it gives it a lot of depth and richness. So we're going to do the same thing with our footage here. Under the curves you can go to the green tab, we're going to pull it up and over. See how it adds just a little hint of green? So that actually wraps us up for the evening. Make sure to check back in for my next video though because we'll actually be taking a still from this and creating some clip art slash cover art for the video. It'll be a lot of fun because we'll be playing around in Photoshop so make sure to check back in for that. And again, I'm Sparks, and thanks for tuning in to my Adobe Start With Stock video series.